This is Paul Nobles from eatperform.com. We are doing a quick hitter series that is going to cover various topics. And I apologize, the sun is coming right into my basement window at the moment, so um, I look like a, a film character. But today we're going to make the case both for using a weightlifting belt and then after um, or against it. And so this video is going to be for using a weightlifting belt. And luckily, I have Julia Leduski with me here. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I use two belts. I use a Vallejo minimalist belt, which is pretty common um, for people that are doing kind of a high rep but don't need a lot of protection. And then I use an um, Elite FTS lever belt. Um, the reason for a lever belt is that you can actually just release the pressure uh, much easier than unbuckling and taking the belt off. And so if you're going to be lifting for, let's say, an hour, hour and a half, I'm trying to find the right angle where people can see my face, um, then um, you'll, you won't have that pressure around your abdomen the whole time. So, Julia, why don't you take it away? Um, sure. The case for using a belt, I think... Most people assume that when you automatically put a lifting belt on that it will magically either allow you to lift more weight um, or it will magically um, prevent back problems. Um, you know, you see most people in the gym, it's, oh, just wear a belt and it'll protect your back. Um, but there actually is a skill in learning how to use a belt. Um, if you just put one on but don't know how to use it properly, uh, you're going to be missing out on some key benefits. So when you're going for heavier weights, uh, when you're doing a one rep max or a heavy three or um, anything that's going to require, um, that's going to be a long lift, the, long, the lift might take three to five to six seconds long, um, that's when you really want to start to utilize the belt. And the reason that the belt works is what it does is it creates a, um, a pressure around the midsection um, and that allows you to stabilize your abdominal muscles and your spine so that way your form should not ideally break. Um, so what you're trying to do is create this almost like a Valsalva maneuver. If anybody knows what that is, it's like a bearing down type of a, of a pressure in your abdomen. And what we, what we try to teach is we teach people to push their abdominal muscles out against the front of the belt, but also to um, learn how to expand the entire uh, circumference of the belt. So what, what you're doing is, again, you're creating that pressure all the way around the circle, and that's going to help you stabilize. So if you imagine doing a heavy squat, um, it allows you to push, create the pressure, perform your squat, um, and then you come up. So again, if you, if you don't know how to push out on the belt, if you don't know how to utilize the belt to create that pressure, um, it's pretty pointless. So practicing that skill is something that, um, that, you, that you can actually get better at, and, and people kind of miss that point. Can I talk about that for just a second? Because I think that as a newer person, I can probably describe it in a way that's different. And by the way, we, I don't, Julie doesn't look as sleepy as I do, but uh, we just woke up. This is pretty early in the morning. Um, and so uh, basically the best way I think you can say it is to make yourself as fat as you can, you know, mm -hmm. breathe out as fast as you, as fat as you can. And I think I watched a, um, a video with Dave at one point, uh, Dave Tate from Elite FTS, describing it. And when you have, thank you, um, have breathed as much as you can, then breathe some more. <laughs> you yeah. know, because you have to have not only your back, but like just imagine you trying to look the silliest you possibly could breathing your stomach out, that's exactly what you want because that's what's going to protect your spine and that's what's going to provide that stabilization for your and, core. And you make a really good point. The When you breathe, when you take that deep breath in, and then this is something that some lifters, you know, some new people might not know, when you take a deep breath in for a heavy lift, um, 
yes, you you are going to hold your breath. There, you know, there's a lot of you know things out there. Don't hold your breath while you're lifting, and there are cases for that. But when you're performing a maximal weight, if you watch any heavy lifter, weight lifter, Olympic lifter, you have to hold your breath. The key is to not breathe into your lungs. If you see somebody take a deep breath and they inhale into their lungs, but it's all going here, that's not really doing anything in the in the abdomen and the abdominal muscles. So you make a really good point that you have to learn how to diaphragmatically breathe, which just means to breathe into your belly and make that your belly as as big as possible. Imagine wearing a belt that's a size too big, but you want to fill it. You want to be able to expand it and, and push out on it. There's a lot of different, oh, I was just going to say there's a lot of different belts out there. You mentioned a couple that you like. I have a basic single prong um, belt from Elite FTS. Um, there are there are thinner belts for women um, that aren't so wide across the back. Um, Spud Ink uh, that Elite FTS sells makes some really good thicker but cloth Velcro ones um, that can be really good for some uh, you know some beginner people as well. The now I I understand what you're saying about breathing in. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense to me. But it when I think of it. Truthfully, it's really more like breathing out, you know, where mm -hmm. you're breathing out your stomach. Um, and, and I understand what you're saying because what I what I hear people the terms that I hear people using are breathe in and get tight. And so I think let's say that you've been lifting for a month or two months or you're just not you just don't commonly use a belt. Um, if I was hearing those cues, what I would hear is you know, suck in, you know, and get tight, you know, and it's not like that. Mm -hmm. And we definitely need to make that point absolutely clear. Now, the I think the last point, you know, um, that people will say is that um, wearing a belt makes you weaker. It, it makes you reliant upon the belt. And while certainly there is a case for that, and I'm sure you're going to make it, um, and and we should probably focus on that part. The next the next um, video, we got to remember why we're lifting, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we're lifting is to achieve some level of health. I'm a 44 year old man. I have two daughters and a wife. I got to carry in stuff occasionally, and you know what, if I don't protect my back at the highest reps or protect my back at my absolute maxes, you know, I'm seriously putting in danger, you know, my regular life. Weightlifting is not my whole life, you know, and people go, well, weightlifting totally is my whole life, dude, and I'm like, okay, even in that instance, it's only for an hour or two hours, three to four times a week, so, you know, at least consider, you know, um, you know, we're going to make the case, like I said, mm -hmm. for not wearing a belt in the next video. But there is some level of protection that you should consider because I see a lot of people. This is the other thing I wanted you to talk about specifically, Julia. When I say a lot of people, okay, I definitely mean some men. I mean all women. <laughs> like literally, I know almost no women that use a belt. You know, and can you speak to that? Because, I mean, I know in powerlifting, obviously, it's a much bigger deal. But I see so many people like, oh, man, my back hurts, my back hurts, my back hurts. And it's just like you, you're, you're missing, like, the easiest way to protect your back by not buying a $19 belt. <laughs> you know what? Well, for, I think in regards to women, it's probably one of those that they just, they're just uneducated on. They just don't know. Um, what it's for or how to use it. Um, some of them there might be the whole silly factor, well that's what the bodybuilder guys wear and I don't want to look like that so that's not, um, so I, I think there is some there. Um, I do think that again if you know those people who are complaining of back problems like you said, one simple thing, a small piece of the puzzle could be to add a belt to the regimen but like we talked about we still have to teach them how to use the belt again magically putting it on does not make your squat form perfect so teaching them how to use it um, but it is something that can you know that can definitely teach people 
and this is a, this is an interesting thing. It can actually be a good teaching tool, whether you want to use a belt or not, um, on how to create the abdominal tightness that we talked about. Um, For sure. If yeah. you don't know how to get your abdominals tight, trying on a belt just to see what it's like is a great way to do it. One thing that I would suggest to people is just to sit down in a chair and expand your abdominals and try and go as heavy as you can. And a lot of the times you will you will feel some kind of tendons in your back um, get get like I don't want to say popping but but like expanding mm -hmm. and um, and normally it feels good you know and that's that's sort of what using a belt kinda helps emphasize is that there's some level of protection there that makes a big, big difference. So I think we covered that pretty good, Julia. So let's get on to the second video. So we'll end this one right now, and I'll be right back.